ESPN had their college football top 25 future power rankings. All right. So they looked at it from the 22, 23, and 24 seasons. I do not believe Texas was in the top 25. Really? I, which I found to because be. Because they didn't think Quinn Ewers is that good? I mean, I don't know. But I found that to be kind of stunning considering how frequently the college football version of the Cowboys are overranked. And I found that to be stunning. And now what's going to happen with Quinn Ewers, who is like, well, I'm not waiting behind CJ Stroud. I need my NIL money now. And it comes along with me playing. He's going to get one year. And that one year better be awesome or else... Here comes Arch Manning because he's a bigger prospect than Quinn Ewers. Like, I get it. Quinn Ewers, number one, he's awesome. Rock on. Like, I have I feel like I've heard about Arch Manning for like six years. Mm -hmm. And he's just now going to be a senior in high school. And so he commits to Texas. So the top two quarterbacks, if not only the last two years, I think you can make a pretty strong argument. The top two quarterback prospects or among the top two quarterback prospects of the last 10 years are both at Texas or both either signed or committed to Texas in back-to-back -back years. This is a big deal for them. And if you are a recruit and you see any, any remote success with Quinn Ewers this year, and you're a wide receiver or any kind of offensive player, you're like, or even a defensive player, you're like, I got this is the place. I get it. They're going to the SEC. Yeah. Like there's all the things coming into play. My I guess the question is, if you're Quinn, do you do you leave next year? Like do you like you, you get one year in and here's, say, here's I gotta my, go? Here's my strong thoughts being not that high of a pro this is 26th overall prospect in 1996 or college recruit baseball america had me super high right yeah. i mean i wasn't number yeah. one but being number 26 in the country Schloss is pretty darn how, how good you yeah. were um is in this situation if i haven't signed paperwork which he hasn't yeah okay and quinn yours goes out there this year and goes 11 and one and they make the final four i call it yeah I'm decommitting from Texas and I'm going somewhere else. I'm not going to be the guy. If I'm Quinn Ewers and I go eight and four, like probably more realistic and Manning's coming in and I, I'm probably having to do a little bit of the Baker Mayfield thing. And I'm like, Hey man, I did really good. And I bet there's a lot of premium teams that are missing a good quarterback. I just showed in my first year as a starting quarterback, I went eight and four. We're going to the Alamo bowl or whatever it is. Uh, and teams are like, we can have him for three more years on our team. He's like, so I think now with the transfer portal and everything, I think how Quinn Ewers does dictates if Arch Manning really goes there or not. Because if they're if they're playing for the national championship or they're that close and they have two or three more years of Quinn Ewers, I think at that point, if you're the coach, you're going, sorry, we're taking you out. Uh, you got, you did great. You took us to places we haven't been since Vince Young or, I'm sorry, the other quarterback that won the national champion. Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy. Then they're going to keep them in there. They'll be like, we will want you, Mr. Manning. We really want you, Arch, but you're not going to play your freshman year. Is Arch going to be like, okay, that's fine, man. I'll, I'll, I'll sit out my freshman year. But can I be the quarterback sophomore? Yeah, we really think so, unless Quinn Ewers comes back, because then uh, you'd have to sit down again if he's going to take us to another national championship situation. So they didn't. They, oh well, and obviously like the level of play is there, but we saw that happen at Texas before, where Major Applewhite was there and he was successful, and they were like, "But Chris, you're like the prospect, right. and we want you." And they said, "We promise you, you'll get your shot. We promise you, you'll get the you'll get that opportunity to be it." And then Chris showed up, and there was you know controversy. Yeah. You know, there, yeah. it became it that happen. big controversy, and but Major, Major Apple White, who was probably the better quarterback, oh, he was for sure, <laughs> and he wasn't going to leave either. And there were different transfer rules where mm -hmm. you'd have to sit out a year, and they could block you from going to Big Twelve teams. And so I, I think that it'll be interesting. What an important year for Quinn Ewers because he's either going to be a one year starter at Texas, or. He has to win the conference and then have – I think he has to make it into the Final Four. I think he has – they have to be a top four team at the end of the year for Quinn Ewers to keep that job now. And, and I call it a job. It's a job. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're not you ain't a student athlete in, in college football as a quarterback. I was looking at an article from a week ago that said Ewers and Hudson Card, the sophomore, were in the middle of a quarterback battle. Well, if Ewers doesn't become the starter – I would anticipate he would just go ahead and transfer out this year 
anyway. So I don't think he would wait out for that. And then I've seen a couple of people say that Arch Manning is going to red shirt. And I have not seen any confirmation on that. Yeah, I've seen that. a couple of a couple of those things, well, but I don't have any that, like speculation on that. about that. And I look, I get it. From the six eight two, I see jokes about losing to Kansas and can't be well, you know, there'll be five hundred and everything like that. I I I understand all of that, but still, if you're a Texas fan, I think this is reason to be very excited. I was looking at 24-7 sports, huge okay. recruiting site. And usually the best prospects you see are like on the scale of zero to one. The best prospects you see, is like number one in the country is like 0.995 or 0.997. Quinn Ewers is a flat 1.0 and Arch Manning is a flat 1.0. You do not see those ratings a whole lot. I actually, Kevin, do uh, go ahead. Keep going with that. I was just going to say, and that's huge like i don't particularly recall seeing a flat 1.0 so that's a huge number not for even on jackson jeffcoat no not even on uh rico smalls <laughs> no, rex burkhead sorry no to both of those All as right. well. there were a lot of players there <laughs> yes there were um kevin i'd see multiple stories from the past year uh like in january and stuff that do say that the manning's camp d has said that he would consider redshirting or sure. he would be open to redshirting. So there are okay. those that exist, but I mean, when you make that, because every one of these colleges though is going to want to get him in as quick as possible though. No, and you're right. And I'm not disputing that at all. It's just the idea that he's 100% going to redshirt is different than I would redshirt mm -hmm. as opposed to I 100% am going to redshirt. And it's also very different whenever you're the coach and you bring those guys in and you're watching the two and you're like, that one's better. Why would I not start that one right now? Even if he's open to redshirting, I want that guy on the field. And especially Sart, Sart needs a big season. He, need, he needs some special stuff to happen uh, because that Texas program doesn't like to give you lots of years. They're Dude. like, hey, you haven't had success yet? See you later. Here's what I want. I want Quinn Ewers to be great. And I want them to go like 10 and 2 and look like, oh my gosh, they're really close. Yeah. And then I want Arch Manning to say, I decommit. I'm going to Texas A&M. And you have Quinn Ewers Holy. versus Arch Manning. When they're playing in, in the SEC. State. Yes. Because wouldn't that be unbelievable when they restart the rivalry if there was something like that? And I'm sorry, I don't know Texas A&M's quarterback situation that yeah, well. Yeah, they are in the midst of their own quarterback battle right yeah. now as well. But right now for Texas, it is super awesome. But I've just... We saw this with even Chris Sims. Chris Sims was going to Tennessee, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, last minute before signing paperwork, I've decided not to go to Tennessee. I'm going to Texas. And I know that Chris Sims ended up not being as good as everybody thought, but he was, would you say he was similar to Arch Manning's kind of uh, popularity? I think so. And, and so I just, this is great for Texas. I'm not trying to ruin your day at all. Awesome. But to me... Until the paperwork is really signed yeah, and he can't go anywhere else for yeah. 2023, uh, I would just say congratulations. But this is like saying – it's not even this close. It's like saying Jalen Brunson's a Dallas Maverick next year. We've heard all the rumblings that he's <laughs> yeah. told his teammates, hey, I'm coming back to Dallas. Don't worry. On July 1st, I'll sign that contract. But all it takes is a few other moves, and we're going to be like, crap, I thought it was done. So – I want, here's what I want. I want him to be, I want yours to be a hero and be really good. And then for them to say, yeah, but we're giving it to Arch anyway. Oh. And then yours transfers to OU instead. And he okay. goes, but more likely what's going to happen is they do that, that kind of scenario. And then uh, Lincoln Riley grabs him because that's what he does, right? He goes and grabs somebody oh, that somebody so tossed USC, out. He just makes come. him a Heisman Trophy winner. So that's more, more likely scenario. But yeah, OU, not A&M. And I, then UT and OU walk into the SEC hey, and take it over. Well, and A&M's like, oh, crap, all that I'll stuff what, we talked about. Texas ain't taking over I the do SEC. like all of these scenarios. <laughs> I don't care if it's that, yeah, Ewers does great, but they're like, sorry. <laughs> Manning's coming in, and then he transfers to AM. You, Corey, you should want him to transfer to AM first. That's the stopgap to get to Oklahoma. Right, yeah. So then you can win the Heisman Trophy and go number one in the and draft. Let's face it, doesn't you seem way more Johnny Manziel than Arch Manning does? I, oh, yeah, with I that don't mullet know. and everything. It's just For a sure. haircut, guys. But it's look, just a haircut. I heard Mike likes it. And so that's that's what I think. And I we've had a couple of people point out is that Vince Young 
was a 1.0. And then from the 214, I haven't I haven't fact checked this, but they said that Vince Young is the only other 1.0 quarterback that they remember. And clearly Vince Young is one of the most spectacular greatest college, college football quarterback, quarterback we've ever, ever seen. seen. Yeah. And so didn't transfer to the NFL, but he was the Michael Jordan of college football for me. And if either one of these guys turn out to be what 90% of Vince Young, holy crap. That is an extravaganza of awesomeness for Texas. Now, you brought up something about Texas being in play because of the SEC. I was looking at Arch's, like, kind of final six or so what people thought. All SEC, right? They weren't, but they were mostly SEC. It was Georgia, Alabama, LSU, now Texas, who's moving to the SEC, and Clemson, which I understand. The only one I couldn't really wrap my head around was Virginia. Heck yeah, man. And I'm like, that's cool, but... Why? Um, I don't know. Let me I, look. You know, I didn't. I didn't get a chance to check that out. But look, this is a place that I would go if you're looking for that nil money. Arch Manning at Texas. That's box office right there. And look, and I think Texas perpetually underperforms or underdevelops players, but Texas has a lot, lot lot of money and they are a big name and Arch Manning is a huge name. The potential for him is to make million, millions at Texas. Alabama loses out. Nick Saban so mad at what his former coach said at Texas A&M that he is the new coach at Texas with Arch Manning in 2023. Another storyline. Let's do that. He's like, Alabama can't compete in this new market. All the money's at Texas and Texas A&M. They're paying their teams $50 million a year to play football. And I have to get out of Alabama because Alabama only has about $25 million per year. So I am going now to Texas to coach this Arch Manning guy. Oh, my gosh. And then, actually, here's, here's what happened. the happens. rumor finally comes true from about eight years ago or whenever Peyton, it was. <laughs> Peyton becomes the new head coach at Texas. Oh, my God. Eli becomes the new head coach at A&M, and Cooper head coach is OU. You know what's fascinating Don't to forget, me. this is Cooper's son, so now he's at OU. So and it, don't forget, Cooper was the best. So it's not enough that we have two of the biggest prospects in recent memory both ending up at the same school that is in our state. You're like, well, we need to trick it up. I need. <laughs> I like it. Poor Hudson Card is sitting there. He's like, hey, I play quarterback too. I could be here. I know we got to go, but is there any way that this NIL thing finally puts Texas on the map as actually a football state because we might love football, but we're not very good at it in this state in college sports. We don't keep those people. Yeah. So maybe Arch, this will change it. Arch's mom went to Virginia. Okay. That's that's the connection. Thank you. I should have just called R, R, RJ. Yeah. He'd have been like, oh my God, yeah, here's the deal. I'm like, I don't got time for all that. Yeah.